Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Tips and Techs, Trevor's going to show you how to build a Pontiac engine. Yay! That's right, Danny, and thanks for getting that introduction correct. Now remind me to give you a doggy treat later, okay? A doggy treat? Oh boy, I can't wait. Um, 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 um. Mm. All right, so this Pontiac engine is the 389, also could be a 421, and it's come from our 1936 Ford model kit as the optional engine. And this engine you can build one of two ways, and that is with a custom uh, set of tricarbs and as a racing version with a dual set of tricarbs for six carburetors all in all. And like I said, it comes from this kit. And if you want to see a review of this model, check it out up here, up top. And uh, the engine has also been in many other earlier versions of the AMT 3 and 5 window coupe. This is, again, one of the earlier versions. We'll be looking at the instructions out here. And I also have another treat. <laughs> Pardon me. A friend of mine gave this to me a while ago. And if you notice, it's the Chilton Auto Repair Manual from 1954 to 1963. And these engines, of course, all come in the AMT Trophy Series model cars, which were introduced at that same time period. So this book is actually helping me to identify some of these motors and all the great things about it. So let's go down to the bench and we'll take a quick look at the Pontiac engine in this book, as well as the one in the instruction sheet and then we'll begin our build. So Danny, we'll start off with a little bit of a history of this Pontiac engine. This engine came out in 1955 as the Pontiac Strato Streak. And this picture of our book here shows a exploded view, which of course doesn't have the uh, cylinder heads on it or the oil pan, but still this is of course from a repair manual. So the original size of the engine was 287.1 cubic inches in 1955. In 1956 it got bored up to 316.6 or 317 cubic inches just to round it off. And in 1957 it became the 347 and that was the first year that the tricarburetor option was available. Here's an exploded view of the cylinder heads and the intake manifold as well as the exhaust manifold and the gaskets in between. In 1958 this engine got bored out again to 370 cubic inches and it got dubbed the Tempest V8 until the end of 1960. Finally it was bored out one more time to 389 cubic inches in 1959 and it was dubbed as the Trophy V8 due to its winning streak. This engine may have also been bored out to 421 cubic inches as a final big monster motor. Uh, and this 389 engine, getting back a little bit here, uh, started in 1959 and ran until 1966. The original Trophy Series model kit came out around 1961. But in the early 1970s, the three-window coupe showed this motor as being a 421 Pontiac, as you can see on the side of the box art here. Now, like I was saying, this, of course, could be possible because the engine may have been bored out another time to make it 421, although I would like to think that it is still the 389. Now, Danny, the reason why I suspect that the engine is a 389 is based on the Trophy Series model cars and when they came out. And I do believe this one came out about 1960 or 1961, maybe as late as 1962. And in that instant, they wouldn't have the 421. It would be the 389. Anyway, that is just how I feel about this. <laughs> so... In our instructions here, we have the subassembly, which shows the engine block halves going together. The magneto is molded on the block, much like the Buick nailhead motor that we did earlier. You have your left and right hand cylinder heads and the 
plated valve covers, as well as the plated front cover, which does look like the exploded view of that engine that I showed earlier. Now we can slide our instructions down, and here you see the two choices that we have. And I did look at some really early instruction sheets for this model car, and they also show the uh, dual carb, or well, six carburetor pack setup, which in some of the mid 70s editions and early 80s editions, they only showed this motor here. Now, I don't know why they did that. They didn't have the extra log, maybe a decision at AMT just to block off these parts. Who knows? Anyway, so we have our out of the factory, you know, 1957 style with our tricarbs. We've got our air cleaner, our tricarburetors, our radiator hose, which we'll leave off in this build because that's for when you put it in the car and hook it to your radiator, of course. There's our tricarb intake manifold, our subassembled engine, chrome plated generator, and our fans and our belts. The, actually, there is no fan, it's the belts and the pulleys. Then, if we look on our other side, which we will also build both motors, I have enough of them. Somehow I got more than I need. I, I don't know where they all came from. Anyway, we have our tricarbs and our, or, sorry, our air cleaners and tricarbs, both left and right hand side banks. We have a six pack intake manifold here, which it says to paint aluminum. Then we cut off the generator because that would hit right into these carburetors. And we glue on what's remaining of our pulleys into our engine below. And there you have your street racing engine and the more drag racer style, or even just a more powerful street engine. All depends on how you want to build this thing. So let's start off by building our sub-assembly up top. Here we have our plastic components for our 389 Pontiac engine. We have our engine block halves. We also have our exhaust manifolds, our cylinder heads, our six two-barrel carburetors, or you could just use the three two-barrel carburetors, our intake manifold for the six carburetors, our intake manifold for three dual carburetors, and our belts and pulleys. And here we also have a fiberglass license plate shroud, which goes on the back of the 36 Ford, but that's not really an engine part, so we won't worry about it. But these, of course, are our gray plastic components. And now let's gather up the chrome plated components. Here we have our chrome plated components, and this would be our front cover for our engine. Here we have our two valve covers. These two pieces here are the carburetor tops. The air cleaners, I should say, for our tricarbs. And then this piece here is our chrome plated generator. And I think that's all our chrome parts for the Pontiac engine. Of course, this is the intake manifold for our Ford Flathead, but we're not doing that engine in this build. So there's all our chrome components. And now all we need to do is cut out the chrome and set it aside and get ready to build our plastic engine block. Here we have our two engine block halves, which I clipped off the parts tree using our Zuron cutters here. And what we will do is get this thing ready to glue together. Now on the back there are some location pegs and holes, and just as a dry fit you can easily put them together, just like that. And one thing I've noticed with this engine is that the holes for our uh, going off our different or um, drive shaft back here, pardon me, <laughs> and the ones in the front, they are a little bit out of alignment. As you can see, one is just a bit higher than the other. So following an old suggestion from my uncle way back in the 1980s, he says to uh, get rid of these alignment pins. And we can do that with our sanding block just by sanding them basically off until we get this nice and flush and arrange them. Now remember, you're cross sanding, so one, two, and then this way. That's to make it nice and flat on this edge. And then I'll also do the same over here 
just uh, be careful of that magneto there. Seems to like that. And if you want to know what tools we're using, don't forget to check out our video, just scrolling up the top here, on our tools that we did a long time ago in the Tips and Techs video section. See, the holes are still out of alignment, but now if you glue, put glue in here, you do have that option just to move it around a little bit until it comes to alignment that you like and not what the factory prescribed. Also, I'm leaving the seam lines on this because what we will do is just take our tester's glue here, run it along, and um, once the glue is dry, we can sand all the seam lines out of this as a unit, which I can, or we can do off camera. And just run a nice bead of testers old good old red tube glue now remember Danny what do we need to do on our plastic components to make sure that the glue fits and sticks perfectly remember to scrape the paint and chrome off those contact surfaces of the plastic before you glue it together that's right Okay, so we got the glue on here, and we'll just put our block halves together. Make sure you don't get glue on your fingertips when you're doing this, because it's just another thing that you could accidentally like touch here, and then you've got a glue spot. Remember, this glue is melting the plastic, so you got to be really careful with it. Okay, so we just wiggle this around until it gets into the alignment that we want which would be like nice shapes here and on the front flat across the top and not hopping like the central holes in here. Okay, so let's let this dry and then we can come back after we sand it and I'll show you how to fix those holes. Now the glue has dried on our engine block and I was able to use our sandpaper here and just sand down all our seam lines and I also smoothed it out with some finer grade sandpaper and now I've got our hole enlargement tool, the one my dad made many many years ago and we just can put it in this like you can see how the hole is way off center there I mean look at that, it's hopped down on this side and up on this side same with the bottom one so we can take our hole enlargement tool and we'll put it in there and just give it a spin the bottom hole. Now I can feel it moving a lot better. And there's our corrected hole as you can see. And we can do that on the top. And there we go. Now you may not have a hole enlargement tool like what my dad made, but you can also do this with a hobby drill. So you're not completely out of luck. <laughs> Now the holes are bigger, of course, unfortunately. That's really all we can do. This one here at the back of our transmission as well for the drive shaft. And there they are. And then all you need to do on here is there's a little bit of a flash or whatever that came up. So we can easily just remove it like this. Actually, you can also do your holes with your hobby blade, but that doesn't always turn out perfect. So there, now we have our aligned holes. Maybe just give this another quick little twirl here. And there it is. So now our front engine cover whoops, should be able to fit on there nicely. Uh, the right way around there and then now you can kind of see that the holes align in the back there as well I don't know maybe you guys can't see it but I can and uh, that's how much better it will be so I'm not going to put the chrome cover on until we paint the engine however we do have our cylinder heads which can glue onto here uh, now at this stage you could also put on one of the intake manifolds You'll have to decide which one you're going to build first, either the one with six carbs or the one with just three. And of course, following our instructions, they should just go on nice and easy like that. 
I would uh, recommend gluing on the intake manifold first and then you can move your cylinder heads up and down to make sure that they are aligned. So I will do that and then we will come right back. So one of the locator pins that I did keep is on the bottom half of the intake manifold and that's the one that drops into this hole here. So what I was saying about the cylinder heads is, as you can see, they do tend to have a lot of play in them up and down. So the first thing you want to do really is figure out which intake manifold you want to use, plop it in the hole, glue it down, and then put some glue in on the cylinder heads and push those up to meet the intake manifold so that they all end up in the proper alignment. And one thing you need to note in the instructions is which cylinder head is right and left. As you can see, one of them has a dot right here, and the other one doesn't have a dot sticking up. And then if you look on the block, there's like this big long line here, and the other side doesn't have that. It's got these two fat pegs that stick out. This one has a thin peg, a big line, and another thin peg. So that's how you know which is the right cylinder head for here. So I will build one of these with that intake manifold and then a second engine block with our other intake manifold. And I'm going to use that same technique. Push this on first. Actually, I should paint this one aluminum first, like it says in the instructions. Uh, but you can actually just put this on without gluing it. And then glue your cylinder heads. Move those up and down. Then you can remove this one to paint it with the aluminum paint. But on our, you know, this one, <laughs> intake manifold for the six, uh, three carburetors, this one is a factory one, so it will be painted factory colors for the engine block. It's not like a hot rod aftermarket thing where they unbolted this one and put this one on. So it all depends on how you want to build it. But what I'll do is glue this one together with the tricarbs, and we'll take a look at it. Here we have our two engines side by side prior to painting, and as you can see, they're pretty much the same engine. The only difference, of course, is our intake manifold for our tricarbs on this side, and our, I guess you could call them dual tricarbs, or six pack, let's just say the six pack, sitting here. Now, like I said, what I did is I just used the six pack to get the alignment of the cylinder heads, and this is all removable. I had to open up this little hole a bit bigger uh, just to fit that peg in there. And now what I've noticed is, if we just move our engine blocks out of the way, this peg, if you take your um, little clamps here, your closed peg clamps, will actually fit on there really nicely and steady. So you could use this when you spray paint and spray paint it with aluminum or chrome or something like that. And as an added bonus, you can also glue the carburetors in prior to painting all of this and have a nice little grip down here. Now for the engine that only has the tricarbs, you could also use these little closed peg uh, clamps just to clip it on those little pegs down below. And then you can spray this aluminum or chrome or whatever you want to do maybe even gold, or brush paint it for that matter, and still have something good as a grip to hold on to. Wow, I really like how that engine's coming along. Here we have the top of our six pack with the chrome air cleaners on. Now I haven't glued anything, this is just for the trial run. So what I want to note here is, the peg is at the back of the fuel logs, okay? Then we have our carburetors here, and as you can see, they've got a round back and then the square thing in the front. The square goes to the front of the engine. And the reason why I've stuck the chrome air cleaners on is so that they're not like sitting, you know, at a funny alignment where they're touching. There should actually be a bit of a space in between. So like I said, none of this is glued on, easy to take off. This is just a memory aid so that you know how to set this up so it will be nice and in line 
for the finished result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that up again. This time I'm going to glue the carburetors onto the fuel log. And then once that's dry, I'll pull off the air cleaners. I will clamp it with our clothes peg clamp on the back there. And then I will spray paint it with the chrome. Now for the regular tri-pack, you don't really need the air cleaners to align it up on the engine block. You're going to paint this chrome, of course, first, or silver, or aluminum, whatever. Uh, you don't really need that to line up because this one, all you need to worry about is the bottom and make sure that it is sitting straight up and down on your engine block. And that should be pretty much great for the tricarb option. Here's our carburetors after I applied some chrome spray paint to them. And as you can see, it really did dress them up and brighten them up quite a bit. So before we glue these on our car, Danny, what do we need to do? Remember to scrape the paint and chrome off those contact surfaces of the plastic before you glue it together. And why do we do that, Danny? That way your parts will stick together forever! That's right, because we want it to stick on our engine block forever. So I haven't painted the engine just yet, but I'll just show you this quickly. With our tricarbs. Let's see, you can just align them, push them in the hole, and there's what it would look like. And again, like Danny said, we want to scrape off the contact surfaces, so that would be along the bottom here. And then we want to scrape it on these top little pegs, scrape the pegs up clear so that when we put our air cleaner on, we can just put a little glue in all those three holes and squish it right on there and it will stay on our engine forever. Okay, now it doesn't want to go in the holes. <laughs> anyway, that's how it'll look. So what I'll do now is I'll paint the engine block up and we'll take a look at how that all goes together. So I was going through a collection of my old car magazines and I came across this. It's something that got uh, photocopied a long time ago out of a magazine or something. But this is Bill Hirsch, world's number one supplier of engine enamels. And what's cool is here is a whole list of all these engine colors that he has in stock plus whatever car they match, going back to 1922 on this, uh, looks like a early Buick. And if you uh, move around the advertisement a little bit here, let's see, and zoom in. Here we go. You should see here that it says uh, Pontiac engine colors. So blue green from 1940 to 57, except in the Bonnevilles. Pontiac Turquoise Blue, 57 Bonneville and all 58s. Then there's a Pontiac Light Blue from 59 to 65 in all models. And then a Pontiac Metallic Blue from 66 to 72. And then there's a different color Metallic Blue from 74 to 77. So if this engine is a 1955 with the tricarbs, I found this old bottle of Model Masters enamel in a turquoise color. So this should be pretty much what the engine color was originally. And uh, here is our engine block. So I think that would make a pretty cool looking color. I've got this bamboo skewer here, and I'm going to stick it into the back end of our transmission and just push in there to give it a little bit of tension. And then I'm going to apply this with a paintbrush and what I'll do is I'll dip into our paint here. And of course this is enamel, so you need paint thinner and all the proper stuff. But uh, I will dip into the top of our paint. And then I want to jam it into the little spots here. I can actually avoid the top of the engine uh, where the valve covers are going to go. So, well, you still have to scrape the paint off if any gets there for our contact surfaces. But of course I'm going to paint into here and then bring it out lightly along here. I might have to do two coats, but the important part is to get the paint down as far as you can into all these little spaces so that there are no little windows of this gray plastic once your paint is done. 
And like I said, if you do two coats on here, maybe even three, you will have a fully covered engine. So I will paint this off camera and then we can take a look at the results. Whoa, that looks really cool after that neat color of paint. Well, thank you for that, Danny. They do look really cool, don't they? This is just with one coat of paint, too, our turquoise, on our 389 Pontiac engines. And uh, as you can see, this is the, well, more or less stock engine with the three two barrels. And this one is, of course, our six pack right here. And I had to make a little adjustment on where the um, where I put these little barbecue skewer things, the bamboo skewers, because off the back of the transmission, I started to paint it and it sort of wobbled out of there. So I quickly had to change positions and I found that the holes that I made in the front were actually a little bit bigger. So I was able to put more of the stick in there. But I did paint the um, Magneto the same color. I also painted the starter motor and the oil filter basically painted the whole engine block as if I had spray painted it and the reason for that is so that it would be consistent on here when we do paint the other colors like the white for the oil filter and the flat black on the starter motor and whatever other colors we're going to use even painting the magneto with um, the chrome paint if we want to go that route so that's our turquoise painted engines. Next up, like Danny said, we would need to scrape the uh, paint off of where our contact surfaces are for our chrome. And I'm going to do the same for our front covers and our valve covers and everything else that's chrome. I will scrape off all those contact points and clean up the chrome bits off camera and then show you what everything looks like. Don't forget to scrape all the chrome, kids! So the first piece of chrome that I'm going to try to correct here are the three air cleaners. And what I've noticed is underneath here, where they're going to mount onto the top of the carburetors, there's a lot of junk from the chrome plating process inside. So what I discovered is a 7 ths drill, and I don't know what it is in metric for uh, you guys tuning in from Europe, but anyway, the 7 ths drill actually fits nicely in here. I'm not going to power it. I'm just going to uh, twist it like this and just try to knock out some of that chrome junk that's inside. I can actually feel it clicking when I start, start turning the drill. Uh, so yeah, just with fingers, because the mission is not to go through the top of the carburetor heads. The mission is to go, or sorry, the air cleaners. The mission is just to clean it up inside enough so that A, you're getting rid of the chrome in here to a degree, and B, you're going to make it sit flat on the carburetors. So here's our carburetors here, and now you can see we get a nice flat fit and finish on there. And if it does look like it's a little bit lopsided or sloping down or something, you can always just twist a little more in here. Just kind of slowly go. Until they seat nice and perfectly. Just like that. Now you can scrape the chrome off, or the paint off of these three pins and glue your air cleaners on. While you're at it, scrape the painting off of here so that when it's ready to go in the engine, it'll go in nice and clean. Here we have the chrome components for both engines sitting side by side. And here we have our tri-pack right here, our three two-barrel carburetors with the air cleaners already put on. And then we've got our front cover. We have our valve covers and we have our generator here. And then for our six pack, we again have the front cover, our valve covers. There is no generator on this motor. And then we have our six pack carburetors with the dual or the six air cleaners on here. One thing that's interesting is the valve covers have this hump on them, this one on the back, and this one on the front. And then we've got breather caps as well for the oil circulation. And uh, what I've noticed is that 
you know this hump being on the back and then one on the front it's strange that it isn't sort of both at the back you know or both at the front so I don't really have a, a photograph outside of the instruction sheet that shows this any differently so I don't know uh, maybe some of you guys with the Pontiacs with this motor really know which way to go but for now I think what I'll do is I'll just follow the way it is in the instructions and hope it's not wrong <laughs> Anyway, this one should be on this side of the motor and that one on the other. Now, as Danny the dog says, we got to scrape the bottom of our chrome off on the connection points where the glue is going to hit the plastic. Same as on the engine block. So that would be, of course, right there on that edge for both. And then on the back of our cover, there's a nice little square area and a little bit of a... Uh, what do you call it, incline, I guess, at an angle. All that can be scraped off, which gives good connection points. And then on the bottom of our fuel log, we'll have to scrape along the sides here. And our peg. And then in our distributor here, or sorry, in our generator. That's a generator. <laughs> and then on the bottoms there, and in the same locations on our valve cover and front Here's our engine blocks again, and this time around I've painted the magnetos with our chrome silver paint. And I've painted the oil filter white. And on the other side we've got our starter motor painted black. And our spark plugs are in place as well. So what we need to do now is figure out where our parts are actually going to fit on here. So it's, it's going to be pretty much the same on the drag racing motor. So we have... There's our cylinder head there, or valve cover, pardon me, <laughs> valve cover on our cylinder head. So uh, this one, as I was saying, would go on this side. So it looks pretty much like we could just scrape the paint off the edge of our cylinder head just right around there, and it doesn't really look like it's going to affect, you know, how this glues down because the edge of the valve cover goes to the front edge of the engine. So we can scrape that entire area. And then for our carburetors, we can pretty much just cut a little square here with our knife and scrape that area off in there and in the center. Now if we just pull our peg out of the front here, uh, there, <laughs> having a little off-camera battle. Uh, front cover will go there. Is that the right way? Yes. Uh, and then we can just scrape in behind it and it should all come out pretty nice. Uh, another thing I did was I painted our pulleys here with a flat black and they have these really long pins so the long pins are going to go right through the holes in the front cover. And then, as you can see, they poke up through the back. And then they will go into the holes on the front of our engine block for alignment. Which is really nice uh, when you consider that um, AMT has it so that it will all link together nicely and in place. So... That's what our front engine will look like with the chrome cover. Now on the stock engine, of course, factory stock without the custom little chrome bits, the front cover and the valve covers would be painted the same color as the engine block. But again, that would look pretty boring. And then our generator would have been painted black. And the generator is going to go right there. So really what we need to do on our belts and pulleys here is, if I can get them out, there, is to scrape the paint off the long pegs because that's where all the action is going to be for the glue and uh, the contact points on that. So what I'll do is follow Danny's device, take my hobby knife and scrape off all the paint and then I will just glue them down because I think you guys get the concept of this. And the same will go true for our racing engine. 
Then one thing I need to do is find the belts and pulleys and chop off the generator up there for our racing motor. So I'm going to do all that off camera and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Now next up we have to make a little modification to our belts and pulleys here. And I have this yellow set of belt and pulleys from the same engine, just a earlier version. And the reason why I got these yellow ones is because I don't know what happened to the other gray ones. Well, anyway, here goes an original part. So what we need to do... Oh, I've got my knife sanding block and the cutters. So what we need to do is just chop off this part of the belt that leads up to our generator. And what I'm going to do here is just get in underneath with the cutters right about there. And there it goes forever. <laughs> and well, let's take off the parts tree here. Okay, and then just go along on the top here. That's it. Can never repair this again. <laughs> All right, then we can take our sanding block and we're going to run along the round part of the pulley here. Just like this. Try to make that belt look like it's uh, going up on the top. Yeah, that's starting to look better. Okay. Trying to make sure it looks like it'll connect. And of course do the same down on this side. as best you can. Let's really try to round this belt down. And then of course with our hobby knife I'm going to get rid of any overhang, any uh, Flash, any of the debris from the sandpaper. Now it's starting to look like it never had the generator part of the belt assembly. Okay, might have to go off camera just to get this all together, but I think you guys are getting the idea of this now. And there it is. So now you can see just how easy that was to remove the top piece of the generator. Of course I'm going to have to perfect this out a little bit more, but you get the idea and there you go. So Danny, yes Trevor? The only thing we have left to do is our exhaust manifolds here. And what I'll do is off camera I'm just going to scrape all the seam lines down, get rid of any mold marks, which I found to be sort of in the back in the curl part here. Uh, we'll clean them all up and then I'm going to paint them with this Citadel Games Workshop base color paint called Lead Belcher which uh, gives a really dark steel finish. You could also use a tester's dark steel on there as well but basically that's what we'll do and what's nice about this is these are the only hitters really in the AMT Trophy series that actually have the little peg locations and hook up properly into the intake manifold. Maybe not the only one, but one of a few of them anyway. So we'll get all that together and then I'll show you the finished engines. When I was cleaning up the headers here, I noticed that there was a, quite a few sink marks that were really bad on them, like right in here. And uh, what I did was I used my Games Workshop liquid green stuff and I just took my number 16 hobby blade here and scooped a little out and squashed it into the sink marks. And then here on the ends of the headers, I drilled them out with my number 16 drill. So now what I'll do is I'll just clip these up and then paint them and glue them to our engine. Here's our finished Pontiac engines, the 389s. As you can see, this one is the one with the tricarbs, 
and we've got our fan belt and pulleys here with our generator up top as well as our steel exhaust headers and then over here we have our tri-pack this would be the drag racing motor and it's got the generator cut off on the pulleys and then again our steel manifolds and our uh, special intake manifold up here as well. What I'll do is I'll take pictures of these motors and then we can wrap up our video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great build of our Pontiac 389 motor from the Trophy Series model kits. And the reason why I'm showing you all these motor builds is, of course, because they are interchangeable engines, which is always really cool. Oh, here's Danny. Hi, Danny. How are you doing? Are you enjoying the series so far? Ah, okay. Um, so what's new? Oh, okay. Oh, you say you want to see more of these because you want to know what other engines are out there, right? Okay, Danny. Well, next week we'll have another motor, or maybe the week after, I'm not sure yet. But there'll be another one coming up in the future. I bet you can't wait for that, eh? Yeah, that'll be fun, eh? Did you enjoy your doggy treat? Oh, it was good, eh? Yeah. Okay, well, what else you is new with you? Oh, okay. Oh, you say don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. Okay, do you think they'll do that? Oh, that's good. You think they'll subscribe? Okay, it's good that you have all this confidence, Danny. All right, is that it? Okay. Okay, we'll see you next time, Danny. Okay, bye-bye. All right. So, well, again... Hope you enjoyed that video, and from me and Danny, happy model building. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, Visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.